So <coughs> what you have is you have this uh, force F. You have a force F that's known, and then let's say you have a point O. So <coughs> in this case, you're given you're given a force F, which means you will know this magnitude, you will know its direction, or you will know its components, and you know the point O. And we're looking for the moment of the force about point O. So to do this, the way is defined, you're going to drop a perpendicular from point O on the force. So you drop a perpendicular and this angle here, let's say, is 90 degrees. So <coughs> this perpendicular and let's say the distance here comes out to be D. So, <coughs> I said from point which is known, you're going to drop a perpendicular, and that distance, if it's d, then we can define the magnitude as the force magnitude multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the point and the force. So, <coughs> that gives you the magnitude of the moment of the force F about point O. And again, I repeat, as the, it's really not that hard. All you got to do is to drop a perpendicular for point O on the force and find out that distance. That's the shortest distance between the force and the point. But <coughs> moment, this thing here, is a vector. So being a vector, <coughs> You have a magnitude and you have a direction. So we need to find the direction of this, and what you do for that is you create a plane. You create a plane which contains the force and the point. So let's say that you have a plane which contains both. It contains this point as well as this force. Then above this point, the tendency for this moment will be in counterclockwise direction. Or if you think of this as like a rigid rod, and then this force is going to make this whole thing rotate in counterclockwise direction. So <coughs> your direction here I mean, if there was a plane problem, I could say that the moment is in counterclockwise direction. But if the problem was in three dimensions, or the plane was really not the plane of the blackboard, then it can be that simple. I mean, it can be counterclockwise or clockwise. In that case, you have to go back to the right and thumb rule. which means <coughs> you're going to look at the plane, the direction of the moment is going to be perpendicular to that plane, which contains the force F and the point O. And that's really not enough either. You have to look at whether it's going to go one way on the plane or it's going to go opposite of that plane. Like in this case, <coughs> your thumb is going to point perpendicular to that plane and it's towards the class. So that's what's going to be the direction of the moment MO. And to, to avoid all these complications, we do what we call as the vector formulation. Of a moment of a force. about a given point. So 
again, we know the force, so we could draw the force F. And this is the point is somewhere here, and this point is O. So <coughs> we're looking at the definition of the moment of force F by point O. And we're going to use the vector to do that instead of just going through like this, we're going to use vector. Then what you need to do is to pick a point on the force that's known. So let's say if I pick a point here, and let's say that point will happen to be A. So when I say that I'm going to pick a point, then for that point, at least the coordinates are known. So <coughs> O is already known. I mean, with given means you know its coordinates, and you are picking a point on the force that's also known. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a position vector from O to A. And let's call this as R. So <coughs> the point O is known. The point A is known and you're drawing a, a vector from those two points. Then the moment vector MO is simply defined as the R cross F. That means you take the position vector R, you take the force vector